we will now formalize the previous example a bit more and uh, we will discuss the concept of null hypothesis significant test, significance testing or NHST which is the acronym. The idea of, of a null hypothesis significance testing is that uh, we start by defining we have some kind of estimation problem that gives us some kind of, of estimate and we define two things we define a test statistic and then we define a null hypothesis. So we call the test statistic uh, we refer to it as a T and uh, then we need to have uh, the sampling distribution of the T under the null hypothesis. The null hypothesis or H0 is uh, typically a hypothesis that there is no effect, there is no correlation between uh, CO gender and profitability or there is no difference between men and women led companies on profitability. Then we uh, derive based on statistical theory uh, a, a reference distribution. So how would the test statistic be dif distributed if there was really no effect? Then we compare the test statistic calculated from our sample to the distribution and we can say, see that okay this area here gives us the p-value. So it is the probability of obtaining the test statistic under the null hypothesis given our sample size. Then we compare the offshore statistic to get the p-value. So that's the idea of null hypothesis significance testing. Typically this is done by a computer for you so you don't have to draw this normal distribution or calculate the area but it's useful to understand what's going on uh, under the hood so you know uh, what kind of problems we, we face when we do this kind of inference. The simplest test perhaps using the null hypothesis significance testing is uh, the, the t-test and the idea of a t-test is that it assumes that the estimates are normally distributed over repeated samples. It was the case in the uh, when we compare two means so the difference of two means is normally distributed under uh, when the sample size is large enough and uh, then we have the, uh, the estimate then the test statistic is estimate divided by its standard error. So instead of looking at how far the estimate is from the null hypothesis value of zero we look at how far the estimate divided by its standard error is from zero. The, uh, and this follows students t distribution. So that, that looks like a normal distribution but it's a bit, uh, bit wider in small samples. The idea of a t-test or this estimate divided by standard error is that we, we standardize the estimate. So remember standardization is, uh, is uh, subtracting the mean of, of the estimates. So here we assume the mean to be the null hypothesis. So we subtract zero and it doesn't really make a difference. And we divide by standard deviation in which case is uh, the standard estimated by standard error here. So uh, the t statistic tells us how far from zero the estimate is on a standardized metric. If it's more than two standard deviations from zero then we conclude that that kind of uh, observations will be unlikely to occur by chance only because 95% uh, of the observations fall within plus or minus two standard deviations when we have uh, normally distributed statistic. Also uh, so we compare this area. In practice it often makes sense to compare both areas here so we calculate this area as well. The logic being that uh, it would be an important finding if the difference was to the other direction as well and this relates to uh, or it's referred to one and two tail tests. So what area we compare so normally if if we only compare one end of the normal distribution here this is called a one tail test and if we compare the area what is the five percent area here and here together so this is two and a half percent and this is two and a half percent so there's some to five percent then that's called a two tail test. Normally when your statistical software gives you a, a p-value from a t-test or some other test that uses something that looks like a normal distribution for example a z-test 
then uh, it is two-tailed. So you compare both ends. And uh, it's considered cheating to use the one-tailed test because what the one-tailed test basically does, it gives you a p-value that is exactly half of the p-value of the two-tailed test. Because you have two tails here, the probability of the observation being in both either tails is twice as the probability here. So the probability here is half from what the probability here would be. The, the problem with one tail tests is that uh, the standard is, is to use two tails. And if we observe uh, a p-value in a research paper, we assume that it's, it's made by using this two tail test. Sometimes if, it's, if the p-value is 0.06 and, and a researcher wants it to be less than 0.05, they switch to one tail test which allows them to divide the p-value by half and they present those uh, as if they were tests from the two-tail distribution, two-tail test. That's misleading your readers, that's unethical. There, is, there are basically no good reasons ever to use these one-tail tests because this is more commonly accepted and also if someone wants to have the one tail test instead of the two tail test they can just divide your p-values by two and that's that's the difference. The p-values are very commonly used in uh, in research papers so you see uh, papers uh, for example this is from Heckman's paper you see these p-values uh, behind statistics so you see a regression estimate here then there's p-value less than 0.01 that is statistically significant. You see this NS that means non-significant or, or you can see uh, p-values greater than 0 0.05. So for some reason we have decided that the 5% uh, p-value is, is the gold standard and if you have less than 5% then it's a good thing. If you're more than 5% that's a bad thing. So that's an arbitrary threshold. So we have uh, a paper could have hundreds of p-values easily. So it's very commonly used in, in, in the research articles. P-value relates to uh, two different things. So it relates to uh, two different errors. And we have two things uh, in statistical analysis. We have the population and we have the sample. We want to make an inference that something exists in the population using the sample data. So we calculate a test statistic. The test statistic rejects the null hypothesis in the sample. Then we say that uh, we assume it is uh, the null then doesn't hold in the population. But that's not actually uh, always the case. When you get a p-value that is small, it's also pos possible that it is a, a false positive finding. So p is less 0.05 means that if there was no effect then getting that the kind of result that you just got would be the probability for that would be five percent. So one out of 20 samples from population you would be getting a false positive if the null hypothesis wouldn't hold, uh, doesn't hold. So it's possible that it's false positive but it's also positive, possible that it's, it's true positive. So we, we, the problem is we don't know. We have evidence that it would be unlikely that we would get an effect estimate by chance only. Then we conclude that maybe it wasn't by chance only, but we can't know for sure. Then we have, so this is a type one error. Then we have type two error, which is false negative. Let's say that the null hypothesis holds in the population. And uh, let's say that women-led companies are really more profitable than men-led companies. But for some reason, our study couldn't uh, find the difference. So that would be a false negative. And there is the case that we say that we can't reject the null hypothesis. We can't reject the claim that there's no, no difference and there really is no difference. So that's also a, a valid finding. So we want to be uh, sure that we either have true positives or true negatives. The probability of uh, false positives under the null hypothesis is we consider 5% or less acceptable. So if we say that the p-value is valid, then it should behave as expected. So it's okay for the p-value to be uh, less than 0 0.05, 3% of the time, 
if the null hypothesis doesn't hold, uh, holds in the population. So that is, uh, we have a conservative test. That's okay. So we want to er make errors to be too cautious. But if our p-value was less than 0.05, let's say 7% of the time, then you would say that it's, it's too liberal and it's not a valid p-value for the particular test because it doesn't follow the reference distribution. It's important that when the null hypothesis hold, our p-values don't indicate the support too often. Then we have another concept called statistical power. So this is a false positive rate. And statistical power is uh, something that once we have a, a, a statistic whose p-value doesn't exceed a false positive rate, we want this, the, the, this test to identify an effect when it exists as frequently as possible. Typically we are okay with 80% but uh, there are studies with way less power. So 80% power means that when there is an effect in the population then in four out of five studies we would actually de detect an effect. The question is which one is, is more important? So we are okay with, uh, we're not okay with more than 5% false positive rates but we are okay with 20% false negative rates because of 80% power, 20% false negative. Then uh, the reason why it, we are so much more worried about false positives is that positive effects typically have some kind of policy implications. If we find out that uh, a medicine doesn't do us any good, then no one is going to take the medicine. We continue research. If we find out that the medicine helps people, then people will start taking the medicine. If it's a false positive finding, then uh, people will take medicine that is useless or could be even harmful for them. So false positives have policy implications much more often than false negatives and that's the reason why we want to avoid false positives. We have agreed that it's okay to have a 5% rate, hence p is less than 0.05 but not more. So that's of course in some scenarios if you have a really like a life critical thing then you could be using p-value threshold of 0.001 for example. So 0.05 is not the one correct value. That's just the convention in many fields. Some other fields use smaller values and you can use smaller values in an individual study as well.